Now, the CPN has consistently and proactively addressed the uh, country's inflationary pressures through a series of monetary policy adjustments. Since May 2022, the CPN has embarked on a strategic path of tightening and elevating the MPR from 11.5% to 18.75% by July of last year. Now, the series of rate hikes was in response to escalating inflation levels, signaling the central bank's resolve to combat inflationary pressures and stabilize the economy. Now, international finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed joins me now to discuss more on this. Good morning to you, Mokhtar. Thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Good morning, Justin. Mm. Okay, let's try to understand and maybe justify the CBN's reason for this increase because I've been getting reactions concerning that. Now, the governor pointed out that the committee's resolution was primarily influenced by the urgent need to address the ongoing inflationary pressures, the volatility in the exchange rate, and the anticipation of further inflation coupled with rising inflation expectations. Well, do you agree with this? Is this the panacea that we are seeking as since, uh, well, I say, June of last year? Thank you, Justin. You said in June of last year. And at the June of last year, um, the United States inflationary pressure was about 10%. The UK was almost having about 11 to 12%. And what they did was to hike rate, hike rate, hike rate, did what they have to do because of the precarity of their own economy. And today, the UK is doing about 4%. The United States is about 3.1% in inflationary pressure. And we keep hiking rate, keep tightening, tightening. And we've gone from that low of 18% as far June last year to a high of about 29% now. And then we're still going high. And so when you look at that policy and say that they, they do, how does that address inflation and pressure? It does not address inflation and pressure because in the short, the medium, and the long term, it seems not to be working. I've said it over and over. What we do is just copy and paste because every CBN over the world are tightening. We are not looking at, at the peculiarity of our own environment to say, look, do you have to tighten now or do you, do you, do you, do you not have to tighten now? So I think for me, um, tightening is not the solution to our problem because, again, our inflation of, uh, problem is driven mostly by 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 three major is, uh, causes. You see, as the cost of production is high, you know why cost of production is high. Most organizations and most, co most companies provide uh, power for themselves. The cost of energy is high. This is selling for a half time high of about 1,500 1, Naira a liter. So that will make it, the cost of production will be high. Then when you look at um, demand and supply, demand and supply of some particular goods, especially imported, imported group, group, um, um, and goods into this country is still high. So definitely FX rate volatility will come into play. So if the cost of those goods will be high. Then totally again, you look at microeconomic induced inflation, like what we have seen the CBN doing now, what did have they done? They've tightened rate, they've they hiked interest rate, they've tightened it. And so what happened? The cost of funding, the cost of borrowing is high. So what you see again is um, uh, a lot of businesses either not able to pay up their debt or the, bond, the banks will not be able to loan to them any longer. That is microeconomic induced inflation. And so you know, it, those are, one, those are the three major. Then the one that I've been on for a while now is, has been the FX induced inflation, whereby the FX rate has moved as of June last year of 450 to a high of 1,500 at the close of the uh, autonomous foreign exchange market. So all these issues cannot be addressed by just a removal of, uh, of, of, of tightening or hiking rate. There are other, you know, Nigeria will have names for many things, multi dimensional uh, uh, poverty. So we need to have come up with a multi dimensional approach, which must be uh, an approach that is home driven. Okay. So, um, Mokhtar, I want to really understand something. I want you to just really break it down because from the simple economics that I know from uh, Echo 101 and, uh, you know, the little I did in high school, the purpose of all of this is to uh, discourage people from borrowing in the bank, thereby reducing cash in uh, the circulation, right? But let's look at uh, some uh, scenario right now. From what we see, you know, Nigerians have been looking at other means to, you know, to get in monies with all of those loan apps and all of that. 
won't the purpose of reducing the cash in circulation also be defeated? And right now, what happens to personal and interbank loans as well? Okay, when you talk about um, 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 monitoring rates, I mean, mopping up liquidity, I think they've been able to do that. If you look at what the CBM has been able to say, they've been able to mop up a lot of liquidity out of the system. Uh, and when you mop up liquidity, is to encourage savings and investment. You are discouraging borrowing. But like I said, with somebody else talking, how many Nigerians yeah. have money to save and how many of them are thinking of investment? Because some of this policy that they've just brought in, in favors investment climate, uh, and you are investing in the equity market, which may experience some lose. Um, uh, between now and uh, 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 in the next one week or two weeks, but then there will be price correction or maybe, maybe then the price will now start moving again. So definitely you could say that. And now, um, when you look at Nigeria and you look at uh, what the CBI is trying to use in that tool to control um, uh, inflation, mopping up liquidity, you are then uh, striving businesses of cash. What you're going to ask is that what, how much cash have businesses been able to, oh. to get to do their businesses? And again, when you look at that policy, what's going to cost that those that are already borrowed, those that are already borrowed from this bank, is that, I mean, their, their, their cost of borrowing has gone high. And so when they are not able to pay because the earning ability of, of Nigerians are low because of, the, uh, of, of this inflationary pressure that we see exchange rate volatility, like I said. So the, the, the what will ha happen is that non-performing loan in the financial sector mm. will go up, and like you have rightly pointed out, and most of them will not look for other means to borrow to make sure they make in ends meet. Now, the whole idea of this was if you have money, you need you not start driving into investment, maybe safer investment mm. like Treasury that have moved from a from a low of about of about six percent to a high of about twenty two point something percent. That is where you want to move it to. But again, how many was able to save at that mm. time? So how are you going to save when you don't even have enough to cater for your needs? So that's why I say some of these policies that we are trying to uh, 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 come up with our policies that are just not uh, working in our own environment because of the precarious nature of our environment. Okay, man, it's good you talked about uh, investment and people not really having money to uh, even feed, not to talk of um, having spare to invest because ordinarily to reduce um, cash in circulation, you have to incentivize people to invest that they have to get high returns. You know, someone had told me that um, we might see an uh, increase in rates for term deposits, for call rates or tables. Uh, any of that going to be happening anytime soon? Yes, I think for the TB, we're already seeing it. It's, uh, I mean, like I said, uh, a low of about 16%, I mean, um, 9%, 10% to a high of about 22%. And so we'll see that play out in that space. But the beauty about it is that most of the people that were playing off that TB space are people that also have missed so much uh, uh, money in the equity market. Yeah. So what you're going to see is that when the TB stays, TB says it's not going to be bullish, but the equity market will be experiencing some sluggish bearish runs because most of them will be moving their money from there because of um, most of the CBM policy that favor fixed income to equity um, trading. So definitely, yes, I, I can say that's what's going to happen. Okay, fine, Mukta. Okay, in all of this now, we are doing the textbook approach. We are copying and pasting. Now, we're not really hitting the core issue. What should we be doing? Because as it is right now, there are protests here and there. NLC had a protest yesterday and they called it off and they are even saying that it was effective. In your opinion, first, was the process, uh, protest rather, effective? Are we going to see the, the federal government working in the line of uh, reducing the economic hardship? Because as it is right now, everyone is practically bearing the brunt. If we're not doing the right thing, if we're just following textbook approach, what does all of this leave us and what exactly should we be doing? Okay. Um, what, 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 what I would say is that was the strike, uh, protest um, effective. I think it was because of uh, 
the government kept coming out to say, look, where we met almost every demand that you need. That shows that the protest was effective. Even if the Nigerian Labour Congress have said that you've not met all our demands, so definitely they will go to the drawing board and we send a message to the government because this time around, every every Nigerian wanted to be involved in it. And I'm happy that the government um, got the language and then amended their way and said, look, we are meeting a lot of demands already. So for me, I think that is uh, a good. Uh, a good um, uh, 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 way to say, it, okay, we have gotten um, to that. What, you, what was the second question? No, the second question was like, see if we are going by the textbook um, approach. Okay. And, um, yeah, this, yeah, this textbook approach is what it's, uh, for me, it's not working. Like I've said, we've been hmm. doing it over and over and over and over. It's not working. So what can, what should we be doing right? I, I can say, they have done one thing right as such okay. yesterday, and that was uh, improving liquidity supply to the uh, to the to the market, especially the FX market, especially the retail FX market, where they've I mean, given a lot of the change about 300, mm. 1, 1,353 the change. We'll be having the FX from the, from the federal government today. But like I always say about them, you see, sometimes they come up with a policy. And after making a pronouncement, that's when they begin to say, so how, do we go, how are we going to implement this? Mm. And that is a challenge. That is what speculators always niche on, to make your policy statement of no effect. Mm -hmm. Because now, you, the same CBN have said, look, we are going to make sure we regulate uh, BDCs, mm -hmm. that BDCs are now going to be uh, uh, have a capital base of $2 billion. Now, Tier one BDC and then tier two, with tier two BDC. In all of these BDC that you are giving FX, how many of them are tier one or how many of them are, are tier, tier two? two. Mm. So you could see that it shows like you just get a panic set in, then you then you come up with 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 with, a, with an impromptu solution to to see how you can um, uh, arrest the situation that you have created with your pronouncement, and that is one. Secondly, you have said that most beauty change now. If I'm traveling, you will give me more, not more than four thousand um, dollars, and out of that four thousand uh, uh, dollars, uh, uh, about um, they will just allow me have only five hundred dollars. The three thousand five hundred mm -hmm. will be inserted in my card. Now, how much of this bureau the change that you have given this uh, uh, given this form have that technology? online technology, have that uh, mechanism to do what you say you want to do. Because what the CBS is trying to say that we want to digitize all people and we want to, as far as we can, make cashless possible. So you see that you are addressing the issues. But again, the in-depth, the, the, the root cause of what you say you want to address, you seems to be abandoning it for the short-term measure. So I hope that this is just a short-term measure. They will not say, OK, because as it is now, we'll suspend the two billion uh, 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 capital base of tier one. So yeah. for me, that is where they got it right. At least they injected liquidity, and they injected it not even at one thousand five hundred, at one thousand three hundred. Now it will cause panic to the speculators. One thing, speculators. One thing that you speculators thrive on is fear and greed. And one thing you use to cause confusion in the midst of speculators is the same fear and greed. So there will be a, there, will, there will be fear now for them to bring out some of this their liquidity to the market. So we might see the naira to the dollar going further down. But that depends on how much uh, uh, um, success the current CBN drive to the Burundi really change. I uh, mm. hope we are not having this list. And at the end of today, we are still the Burundi really change are still waiting to get um, those um, supplies from the CBN. Okay, as we wrap up now, the final question on the economic hardship right now, we've talked about um, the monetary policy of um, the Central Bank of Nigeria and, of course, um, the Forex um, regime. Another uh, issue that came up just yesterday was um, the lawmakers uh, still in a way to cushion the effect of all of this hardship. They were asking the federal government to adopt um, the food stamp approach. How do you react to that? Well, and you see, we must know that there is a separation of power. You don't just come up with the legislator. You could only suggest to the government that the executive, this is the way you want them to do it. And then both of you could sit down and find it. 
very practically what they are even saying that they want to be done. The green, the, the green, the strategic green reserve that said it would be open and, and green to Nigeria has not even come up, up to this moment. So the one that they have even pronounced, we have not seen the result in it. And now mm. you are coming up with this other one. I think we must try to, to, to make sure that there is a clear cut strategy on ground before you come up with pronouncements on issues that have to do with food security. I think my, my, my take is that they should make sure they have a clear court policy, not because uh, food stamp is working in America, then you think it will work in Nigeria. They, I keep saying our, our environments are very different in terms of data gathering, how many people do we know, how many rich people do we have, how many people are earning. Mm. If you look at all these things, this is what would normally necessitate food stamp or that. But in Nigeria, somebody can even be earning more and still have food stamp. So mm. because we don't have a clear cut um, strategy. So yeah. for me, I, I, I think we should work on that first before coming up with policy statements. Well, thank you so much, um, Mokta, for your time, for all of the wonderful inputs that you always bring on the show. We do appreciate it. Thank you, Justin. All right, that's the size of the show for today. My guest, Mokhtar Mohammed, is an international finance and economic analyst, and we have been looking at the state of the economy vis-a-vis -vis the MPC meeting that just uh, was run of yesterday, and, of course, the protest and how Nigerians are coping. Thank you for being a part of the show. I am Justin Akadonia. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.